Here comes Ilkay Gundogan, who may say goodbye after tonight. The seventh German. To... And Ilkay Gundogan raises this famous old trophy high. Manchester City, the European champions. Manchester is a city known for their football prowess, holding the reins in England, and have even enjoyed the success of European glory on numerous occasions. However, in the last decade, just four miles away, another Manchester team emerged, dominating English football. And though they had once tasted European glory about 54 years ago, they were now in search of the one thing that eludes them, the UEFA Champions League. everything on the pitch and unfortunately we could not uh, yeah we could not win but we will come back in the in the future stronger entering the 2022-23 champions league season the expectations for manchester city were at an all-time high though the team had failed to clinch the title back in 21s and had been knocked out in the semi-final last season there were many reasons to be optimistic this season. Arrivals of the Terminator's Erling Holland, the most sought after young talent in the world, and Manuel Akanji, a juggernaut of a defender, meant that Man City now had a forward talisman who would provide them with clutch goals, which is something that had been missing since the departure of club hero Kun Aguero. In the past three seasons, Holland had emerged as possibly the best young striker in football scoring 86 goals in 89 matches, including winning the golden boot of the Champions League with 10 goals despite going out in the quarterfinals. His incredible first-touch finishing accuracy and all-round play style helped guide Borussia Dortmund to DFB Pokal title. Now equipped with a major attacking option by his side, Kevin De Bruyne was ready to make a run for the ultimate price. To the gap for De Bruyne, and now City on the counter. Haaland through, chance to sink, West Ham! You know what? He never misses chances like that. We found it. We found it hard to outnumber them in the middle of the pitch. We found it difficult to to cope when they got it wide. So today, tactically, they were they were much better, and we hadn't prepped for that. And Gundogan and brilliant from Marlon and Gundogan. City have been relentless in this second half. And Bernardo Silva. Get why people highlight on one player in Haaland who's signing and obviously an exceptional centre forward. Alvarez, Bernardo Silva, Stones, Haaland! Etihad, Joao Cancelo, oh Rasper! Haaland would put up video game-like numbers scoring 10 goals in just six games, becoming the fastest player ever to do that in Premier League history. Playmaker De Bruyne would also assist him at least once across all these matches which was also a record in itself. These all amounted to a total of 20 goals in their first six matches. These stats were a good enough boost to their morale going into the Champions League group stage, and it placed Man City firmly in the driver's seat of the Champions League race. Unlike the previous two years where they were knocked out in the final and semi-final respectively. Something felt different this time around the new look. Man City had only one goal on their mind, to win the Champions League. In the group stage, City were drawn into Group G, alongside Bundesliga runners-up Borussia Dortmund, La Liga fourth-place team Sevilla, and Danish Superliga champions Copenhagen. Man City kicked off their campaign with a 4-0 thrashing of Sevilla. Haaland's scoring streak continued as he netted a brace to increase his tally to 12 goals in seven matches for City. His first goal came from a precise cross by Kevin De Bruyne, followed by another close-range finish from a rebound off Phil Foden's shot. Foden himself contributed with a well-executed left-footed strike after outmaneuvering Nemanja Gudelj. Ruben Diaz further emphasized City's dominance, sealing the win by calmly side-footing Joao Cancelo's cross into an unguarded net. Their second match would be against Borussia Dortmund. City faced a tough challenge against an organized Dortmund side, falling behind when Jude Bellingham scored from Marco Roy's cross. Despite struggling to find momentum, Guardiola's team managed to level the score with a powerful strike from John Stones. Stones has a real crack! Oh, 
Oh, it's magnificent! However, the game's defining moment arrived courtesy of Holland, who, despite being contained by his former teammates, displayed exceptional acrobatic athleticism to kick in a cross from Joe Cancelo. Haaland's remarkable goal eventually secured City's come from behind victory. On match day three, they welcomed FC Copenhagen to the Etihad. Fresh from a decisive win against City rivals United Manchester City and Holland wasted no time, scoring within seven minutes. Cancelo's pass found Holland, who confidently netted his first touch of the game. Despite City's second goal coming later through Halen's opportune tap-in from a rebounded shot by Sergio Gomez, the eventual outcome seemed evident. Having secured victory, Holland was subbed off at halftime. Despite his absence, City maintained control, adding to their lead with goals from Mares and Alvarez, concluding a dominant performance. Game four was the reverse fixture this time with City visiting Denmark. Manchester City's flawless run in the group stage ended with a goalless draw against a determined FC Copenhagen. Despite Rodri having a goal disallowed and Sergio Gomez receiving a red card and a missed penalty by Marez, City maintained their lead in the group with 10 points. On match day five made the trip to the yellow wall in Germany. Despite Riyad Marez missing yet another penalty, Manchester City secured the top spot in their Champions League group. While the match lacked any excitement, both teams achieved what they needed, concluding affairs in Group G with a game remaining. Really, for some time, but both sets of players can celebrate. On the last day of the group stage, Man City welcomed Sevilla home. City found themselves behind due to Rafa Mir's first half header, but their fortunes changed when Lewis capitalized on Julian Alvarez's pass, firing an impactful shot past Yasin Bounou. It was a significant moment for Lewis as he became the youngest player to score on his first start in the competition. A moment of magic arrived through Kevin De Bruyne's assist for their second goal, threading a precise pass around Sevilla's defense, setting up Alvarez. Riyad Mahrez finally redeemed himself as he completed the scoring late in the game. City's unbeaten streak of 23 Champions League games at the Etihad Stadium continued, The round of 16 fixture was between Manchester City and RB Leipzig, and the first leg was played in Germany. The visiting team dominated the first half, scoring through Riyad Mahrez after Ilkay Gundogan capitalized on a defensive mistake. However, RB Leipzig showed more drive in the second half, nearly equalizing twice through Benjamin Henricks. Leipzig eventually leveled the score with Josko Gvardiol's header. And Guardiola is able to climb high and head home. City had chances to regain the lead, including a penalty appeal, but Leipzig held on for a draw. Erling Haaland once again put in game-like numbers as he made history with a remarkable five-goal performance as Manchester City cruised past RB Leipzig to secure a spot in the Champions League quarterfinals. Haaland, at 22 years old, not only became the quickest and youngest player to reach 30 goals in the prestigious European club competition, but also achieved the distinction of being the youngest to score five times in a single Champions League match. Other side, Holland with another goal! Joining Messi and Luis Adriano in this elite category. Even though Kevin De Bruyne and Ilkay Gundogan scored stunning goals, the night ultimately belonged to Holland. This dominating performance was sure to send the fear of God into any team that they would face in the quarterfinal. The quarterfinal would be a much more difficult challenge as they would be going up against one of Europe's most mentally traumatizing teams, Bayern Munich. The game started with intense speed, marked by quick passing from both teams. But this pace surprisingly didn't lead to many clear chances. Erling Haaland nearly took advantage of Jan Sommer's mistake near Bayern's goal line due to a back pass. Less than two minutes later, the home team took the lead. Receiving a pass from Bernardo Silva about 25 meters from the goal, Rodri skillfully evaded Musiala's challenge and unleashed a magnificent left-footed curler into the top corner. The visitors hinted at a potential comeback at the start of the second half, but City swiftly changed the game's dynamics within six minutes. Holland played a brilliant assist for Silva's goal, and then the Norwegian bagged one for himself, widening the gap for City at home. Heading to Munich with a three-goal lead, 
Pep Guardiola's team nearly had to prevent a second leg catastrophe to set up a showdown with the reigning champions Real Madrid. Although Holland missed a penalty in the first half, he redeemed himself by firing a shot into the top corner, capping off a rapid counterattack. This marked the Norwegians' 48th goal for City this season. Bayern managed an 83rd minute penalty through Joshua Kimmich. Man City advanced to the semi final. Standing in between Man City and the Champions League final was a worthy opponent in Real Madrid. They were the current champions and were City's opponent in the previous year with Madrid eliminating City at this very point as well. However, riding the momentum of big wins against previous strong opponents, the team chemistry of City was peaking at the perfect moment. 2023 would be a different story. Pep Guardiola's team controlled the early moments of the tense Bernabeu match, repeatedly testing Thibaut Courtois, who thwarted attempts from De Bruyne, Rodri, and Erling Haaland. Despite their dominance, Vinicius Jr. changed the game with Madrid's lone opportunity in the first half, scoring a remarkable 25-yard goal after a brilliant setup by Eduardo Camavinga. As Madrid surged in the second half, City equalized through De Bruyne's 25-yard impressive shot of his own. Madrid nearly regained the lead when Aurelien Chouameni attempted a long-range strike, but Ederson's save denied them. At the end of the night, neither side could find a winner to take into a second leg at the Etihad. Real Madrid would be in for a horror show at the Etihad. If anyone had any doubts about the greatness of the side Guardiola has assembled, they might have been erased by an otherworldly display, especially in a first half during which Madrid were pretty much reduced to the level of a lower league side clinging on in a cup tie. The only bright side in Real Madrid was Thibaut Courtois, as he decided to go full 2022 Champions League final against Holland. But that was a double-edged sword as he still let four goals past him. In the early minutes of the match, Thibaut Courtois showcased his goalkeeping prowess against an enthusiastic Etihad crowd, thwarting Erling Haaland twice with exceptional saves in the 13th and 22nd minute. Despite Courtois' efforts, Bernardo Silva broke the deadlock just a minute later for Pep Guardiola's team after a slick pass from Kevin De Bruyne. Tony Cruz came close to equalizing with a powerful long-range shot that hit the crossbar. However, Silva capitalized on a rebound after Courtois saved Ilkay Gundogan's attempt, scoring City's second goal. Ederson also made a remarkable save to deny David Alaba's free kick. In the 76th minute, City extended their lead with a goal from Manuel Akanji, who shot a ball that deflected off of Eder Militao and into the net, and a late strike in injury time from Julian Alvarez, assisted by Phil Foden, helped City to their fourth of the night. The 4-0 victory cemented their dominance with a 5-1 aggregate score. Finally, City were in the Champions League final again. It was the club's second Champions League final appearance. While Man City had been heavy favorites entering the final on the opposite side, a true underdog had fought their way out of Group C with Inter Milan having qualified ahead of Barcelona. Unlike City, Inter would have a relatively easier road to the final going through teams like Porto, Benfica, and bitter rivals AC Milan. It was the club's sixth European Cup final appearance and their first since 2010, when Jose Mourinho was manager. Man City would enter the final as big favorites over Inter, but none of the outside expectations phased them as, in their minds, they still had a mission to complete and one win remained in between them and destiny. Surprisingly, the citizens faced difficulty asserting their dominant style against the Italians in the first half. Despite their efforts, Erling Haaland's strong attempt was blocked by Andre Onana. Guardiola's frustration grew as Kevin De Bruyne had to leave the match due to a suspected hamstring injury, marking his second consecutive withdrawal from a Champions League final. The first half ended scoreless, with Inter playing defensively to prevent City from gaining momentum. In the second half, Inter had another opportunity to take the lead if Ederson hadn't thwarted Lautaro Martinez's attempt from a tight angle. Rodri had been left on the bench for the Champions League final against Chelsea in 2021, but not this time. That's a lovely little ball in, Bernardo Silva. Tight angle, pulls it back. Coming onto it now to shoot, yeah! score! <laughs> Rodri! Manchester City lead in the Champions League final! And that's a huge, huge goal for Rodri! 
and the Manchester City supporters have gone absolutely mad. Such a big goal, such a big moment, and Manchester City take a giant stride towards the treble. What a big moment. Two minutes later, Federico De Marco had a great opportunity to level the score for the Nerazzurri. His looping header struck the crossbar, and as he attempted a follow-up, his teammate Romelu Lukaku unintentionally got in the way, inadvertently blocking DeMarco's second attempt. In the 89th minute, the Belgian forward had an opportunity with a close-range header, but Ederson denied him with a save using his legs. Ederson made another crucial save during the sixth minute of stoppage time, this time stopping Robin Gosens's header, thereby securing the victory for Man City. As the... He has done it! Once, twice, three times!